for people who don't know, what's a gig and why would one? Get, how could one get excited about it? You know, what I like about the gig is that I'm not going to tell you how many megabits per second it is because it doesn't matter. The point is it's good enough for you to do whatever you want to do today. That's the point of the gig. And we love that term because it's a non-technical term. I mean, technically, it's a technical term. <laughs> but really, it's about, it's about abundance and saying everything you want to do, you can do with a gig. Give us a one. There are some states that say you can't do it. So that's an easy one to get out of the way. Um, We list about 20 states where they have regulations that range from thou shalt not to uh, what we call um, a leprechaun riding on a unicorn bill, which says you're allowed to build a broadband network as a community. But first, you have to find a leprechaun riding on a unicorn, uh, which is to say it's very impractical and not going to happen. Well, I think I want to start with a brief anecdote, which is the mayor of Lafayette, Louisiana, as ardent a Republican as you'll ever find, someone who ran multiple businesses on his own before going into being mayor and then building an incredibly fast fiber optic network for his city, uh, said, you know, I'm from the private sector. I know the private sector. The telephone and cable companies are not the private sector. These are companies that have depended on government handouts for years, decades in some cases, government enforced monopolies until we decided to toss out that policy approach. But from our point of view um, at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, and and I think Upgrade Seattle shares this, is in some ways it actually opened better windows than it closed. Because if the city built the network in that way, for the next five years, it would be focused on cash flowing the network. I think it's time to, to really focus on equity. I mean, Seattle's been a national leader on this. Uh, and, and so I think you, you pick a, a neighborhood or a couple. The city should be figuring out what way it wants to move forward with using its fiber assets. guy, Johnson Julian, was sort of a local, he was outside of City Hall, behind the scenes, organizing and making sure that all of the communities of color were being reached out to and they weren't being overlooked, and, and making sure that they were interested in turning out for the referendum. And, and they went to the political parties, and both the Democrats and the Republicans endorsed it and led get out the vote drives. If you have political parties that know how to get out the vote and you're having a referendum, that's huge. Are you spending millions of dollars each year on telephone and internet connections that you could provide to yourself if you built the facilities at a lower cost? And we see this in many cases. And and Lisa, I can't even imagine the number of stories you've written at this point that started off with, why did the community build the network? Well, they looked at what they were getting from the private sector for leasing, and they realized that they could have 10 times or 100 times the capacity at a fraction of the cost and have the certainty that over the course of coming years, their prices were not going to raise very much. 